What's up, Rosé girls? It's your girl, Jessica Carroll, and thank you so much for tuning back into our channel. I have a question for you guys. Have you ever been told no? Did it bring you down? Did you learn from it and grow? Us Rosé girls, we got rejected on national television. We were basically told, no, sorry, you're not good enough. We didn't get a rose. But you know what? Looking back, we actually feel like we won in the long run in the long run because we got each other and i am so excited for today's interview because we have the ultimate girl boss in the studio today we are having rose with my friend taylor ferber cheers to that cheers Thanks, now i know the word girl boss is like so overused mm -hmm. but you guys this girl is like the oh, ultimate girl boss because <laughs> she makes shit happen yeah. with just herself and a selfie stick yeah. And I, yep. the thing I really love about it's you just, is that you bring real conversations yeah. to celebrities on the red carpet yes. that we're talking about in real yeah. life. Yeah. Yeah. That's quite the intro. Wait, I love that. <laughs> also, just really quick side note, Jess is getting me buzzed at 1130 on a Thursday. Hey, we're I'm living, so here for this We're life. living our best life. Can right? I be an honorary rosé gal? <laughs> yes. Like, hell yeah. I'm Cheers so here to for that. Well... Um, no. but. My thing is that yeah. you being the ultimate girl boss, Thanks, being Jess. your own boss, and just like, totally. I cannot imagine how many times you have been told no from a celebrity. Um, I mean, let's hear these stories. On a, oh, I have stories, girl. Yeah. I have, so how much wine do we have? Because I have stories. <laughs> we got a full bottle, so. Um, yeah, so like Jess said, I really bring the down and dirty conversations to the red carpet to celebrities. Yeah. You know, sex. Oh. The ones dating. That, the stuff that we actually want to hear. We don't want to hear right. who are you wearing? No, who, who are you not? wearing? How's the project? I'm just that's so not my thing and I'm so not above putting them above the rest of us. Right. So literally what I do, like just said, is I go uh, I'm a red carpet reporter and I will go with my selfie stick and talk to them about these kind of things. And they just really let their hair down and say crazy shit. And it's just really disarming and fresh and real. And, and, and they love it. You know what I love is that, just like you said, the celebrities love it. Because you're treating them like a real human right. being and not a celebrity. Right. And they probably appreciate you just having a selfie yes, stick, they, doing it by yourself. Right, they totally do. But with that said, it's really... Real, can I curse? Yeah. It's really fucking hard to break a mold. Oh, yeah. And that's really what I'm doing. It's something that people have never seen. And so while the celebrities are down for it and they're like, yeah, girl, let's talk. Right. Their people are yeah. like, what is this girl doing? Yeah. So when it comes to being told no and getting rejected, that is truly my daily life story because I love <laughs> that you overcame the image of being the girl with the selfie stick like who really cares you're talking right. you're treating these celebrities like people yes. whereas the, their publicists are like oh we don't want the celebrity to be seen like doing that yes exactly and so every time I'm really trying to overcome which I think I have now I mean my site turns to in the fall and every time I go to do an interview I have that like fear of the, you know, these are high profile people. Right. And you have like the representatives, the studio execs hovering over us being like, what are they doing? I, I don't recognize that. That's unfamiliar. Wait, what are they talking about? They're talking about, I don't, and I have had some traumatizing oh. experiences, but it's like, I have to do what I have to do and I can't let it. Just because they don't recognize the unfamiliar, it doesn't invalidate what I'm doing. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And I like watching your stuff more than freaking like any <laughs> news. Like, okay, let's move on. No, We've heard this so many times. It's so vanilla. So, wait, I want to hear some. What are some, like, the oh, crazy God. stories? Okay, I have a couple. Do you want one from when I got in a feud with a celebrity which made me quit my job? Or do you want a, <laughs> yeah. car or do you want a carpet one? <laughs> Whatever one. That one sounds good. Where you the first? Of, yeah. Okay, so... I used to work at VH1 as a writer, and this is like rejection in a different form on a big scale. Basically, I wrote a piece about a celebrity, and it was essentially calling them out for being a bully because they were on Twitter being like, fuck you, shitheads, whatever, because they were bullied. Okay. And essentially, my piece was like, why are you bullying people 
when, to fight bull. It's like counterproductive. Right. When you were bullied. Right. Right. You know what it feels like. So why right. are you doing it? Exactly. Yeah. So my piece was basically like, you're being hypocritical. Anyhow, my editor, everyone was like, use the word hypocritical. Like that'll get more bites. Like, absolutely. <laughs> and I had the receipts, everything. So it's approved. Yeah. Piece goes up. All is good. All of a sudden, like 20 minutes later, I'm in a meeting and this celebrity starts tweeting at VH1. Can you tell us who the celebrity is? I mean, I don't really care. Whatever. It was Chrissy <laughs> Teigen. Okay. So, like, it's fine. I'm what I've been right. interviewed. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> What's her name? Nick. Nick. Nick, Nick. Nick's standing here. She's like, her jaw dropped. Um, because you think that she's like a down to earth girl. Like, how could Chrissy Teigen be bullied? Right. And well, how could look, she. I've met her and interviewed her since. Like, it's she... fine and she's cool. Yeah. But it's like one of those, like, uh, whatever. So. Yeah. Long story short, she starts tweeting at VH1, being like, who are you to police my thing? She starts tweeting at me personally. And you know me, like, clearly with my brand, I don't give a fuck. And I right. do what I say, what I, what's the expression? Like, I mean you what say, I say and I say what I mean. Yeah, you just say it as it is. So I didn't back down. And basically, it became a fire. I mean, HR called me <laughs> and my bosses called me and they were like, they took the piece down and they were like, why would you write this? And I basically was like, you're making me the scapegoat. I was approved. I'm the lowest on the totem pole. Anyhow, they put me on suspension. Keep in mind, this is my first job out of college. So I'm like, I'm never going to work again. I'm never going to have a career. <laughs> my life is ruined. You know how it is. Yeah. Like, you cannot burn bridges in oh, the yeah. country. Don't worry. When I got rejected on The Bachelor, I was like, well, there goes my life. Right? Like, you, never- you think that's <laughs> it. And, um, and it was really like a, it was like, it was a crossroad where I said, Taylor, you can either suck it up or, you know, you know, apologize, keep your job, sit quiet or fucking leave. Yeah. And I had no job lined up. I was out here in LA. I had no family. I had just moved and out of principle, I quit. Hey, what was it? VH1? Yes. (laughs) Hey, VH1. She's on to bigger and better things. Yeah. And it did. It opened doors. It changed my whole life. And I think that's how you can turn Not to sound like cliche or preachy, but seriously, that's how you turn rejection into being, we were talking about it before the show, into being like, I'll show you guys. Oh, yeah. You know? Honestly, sometimes being told no or being rejected, it makes you a stronger human being because you you learn, like, you know what? Right. I can do this on my own. Or I'm going to grow and learn from that mistake. And like you... You are someone that you just, you don't sugarcoat things. No, and you not are not thing. scared to like ask celebrity like, hey, what's your favorite sex position? Like that's Literally. something you would say. Literally, yeah. And I that's know. what we want to hear. Yeah. I want to yeah. know like what Chrissy Teigen's favorite sex position is. Yeah. Which on Retweet. Legend. Retweet. Retweet. Come on, girl. <laughs> but, but no, it's true. And I've had times on carpets where, you know, a celebrity was enjoying themselves. And then the publicist said to me, literally Jess said to me, bring up your phone and delete that video. Truly. Did you do it? Um, sometimes I'll like pretend to. Yeah. And then <laughs> like it happened to me with Demi Lovato and Demi was cool enough. Like her pubs were like, like jumped across the room being like, what are you doing? Cause again, this is not what they're used to. Right. And Demi was cool enough where she was like, let her keep it. It's fine. It's all good. But <sighs> you gotta just, these have to just do what you have to do. Yeah. Like, I love it. You know? So looking back, like what really, obviously being fired from VH1, it really motivated you to create this talk to me. Yeah. With Taylor, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, quit. We, the hard quit. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But, yeah. um, and so who, like, do you have a, someone you look up to? You know, what's funny, Jess, is I did. I moved out here to work for E. I looked up to like the Ryan Seacrest, the right. Leanas, and um, it sort of made me realize that that's so not who I am and what I want to do. Yeah, and go on my own path. And I guess now I really look to like you know Jenny McCarthy, the Howard Stern. Yeah. Um, because right now, like I'm Taylor Ferber, they don't. I'm not Howard Stern. So mm-hmm. if I ask a celebrity about their favorite sex position, their people are gonna go crazy. Right. If it was Howard Stern. 
they'd probably laugh and make a joke out of it, whatever. So yeah. I'm like, Taylor, I'm like, just keep going until keep you get doing to that it, girl. point. And then that's like expected and they're not going to give you grief. And you know? know what's crazy too is nowadays the whole hosting world has completely changed. They don't want the host that just can read prompter. Mm-hmm. They want the host who can really dive deep and create, get that story. And that's what you're doing. Thanks. Yeah. 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 No, it's, it's awesome. I Thank just love you. what you're doing. Yeah. I just, and I've learned too that you have to just, again, sounds so cliche, but you have to just do you, like you talk about hosting. Yeah. I had an audition recently and the casting director told me that I was too sarcastic. <laughs> and I was like, that's my fucking personality. Bro. Right. Like, take it or leave it. Right. So again, rejection. Instead of being like like wallowing and crying, I was like, well, someone's going to appreciate the sarcastic bitch one day. Exactly. <laughs> that's just how it's Clearly go. that role was just not for you. Uh-huh. Exactly. On to the next. On to the exactly. next. Yeah. Wait, how do you feel like being rejected on Bachelor has made you live life differently? So you know what? Being rejected, I felt like... It really, A, made me realize that no matter what situation I'm put in, I will stay true to who I am. Mm -hmm. And I will not let people manipulate me because I kind of felt like I was manipulated a little bit on the show. And I just realized that looking forward, I will never, like, let something like that happen to me again. And I don't regret doing the show at all. But moving forward, it's like I, I built this great group with the rosé girls and i just learned that you know what i know who i am and i have my core values and no matter what i'm gonna always stay true to who i am did you take it personally because it's you know there's so many people it's like produced and you know so i i felt like i was you know on the show for my storyline about how my dad had met ari and i think that they really wanted to kind of paint that picture and that storyline the first episode. And I mean, whether or not, I don't know how much say the producers have, I really have no idea, but I did, I felt like manipulated and I felt like kind of used and that, you know, I was like casted for the show for just for the first episode to leave that night. But whether that's true or not, I have no idea um, because I thought Ari and I had a connection, but you know, life goes on and I'm looking like, I just think that, like I said earlier, I really do feel like I won in the long run. You can do better. Yeah. I'm yeah. confident. Yeah. You guys know. Yeah. But like, how do you no like, shade, Ari. No when shade. you, when you are told no from a celebrity or a publicist, like how do you always stay true to yourself? You know, it was hard at first. I was like, what if I'm not doing the right thing? What if this never breaks through? What if this will never take off? What if it's what people don't want? And I think just staying focused and, again, realizing that it doesn't make you, you know, you or your work any less valuable. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I know that I have a really fucking good idea and that celebrities respond to it and that it's different. If it takes longer to get where I want to go because people don't understand it, then fine. Right. But I just try to remember that. And it's – Yes, it's so hard. I mean, you know, like I'll call it, my mom crying, my oh. mentor crying, being like, why am I doing this? And then I'm like, at the end of the day, like, it's a publicist, whatever. Like, yeah. I'm not, you know. That's one thing I really had to learn is like, I had to get out of my own head and just like, yes. don't care about what everyone thinks. Yeah. You can't please everyone. So as long as you are focused on your goals and you're staying true to who you are, then who cares what they think? Who no. cares what the, what the publicist thinks? That's exactly how I feel. Yeah. I'm like, I just have to, and it makes you feel boss. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like, the, like now in my, cause when I first started, you know, I was naive. And when they told me to delete a video, when they told me, I'd say, okay, and listen, right. and now I'll challenge and I'll say why, yeah. or I'll say, how about this? I'll keep this part to this part. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it's not worth it. And you I learn how to kind of go around the no. Yes. Turn the no into like a yes. kind of, <laughs> Right. right? Cause yeah. we don't really take no for an answer. Exactly. Yeah. You can't, you cannot take no. I mean, I've, had times where I've had great interviews with celebrities or, you know, great projects. And I, like, literally I had this project. I was so convinced Selena Gomez would get behind it. So convinced. I called her publicist. I left messages with his, her I love you for doing this. Like, this is what I mean. Like, you cannot fucking take no. And I don't. Because I'm like, the worst they can say is no. But I'm not going to know. Yeah. Pun intended. Right. If I don't put it out there. Oh, yeah. You you have to try. The worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to hear no. And then you just right. kind of 
work it a, work it a different way, a different angle, a different celebrity. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I'll I'll do a carrier pigeon next time. I try to get <laughs> yeah. to him. I'll try something. Yeah. But yeah, you can't take that. I mean. Well, thank you so much for sharing all of your no rejection stories yeah. because you know what? Everyone in life is rejected. Like I was rejected on national television. In fact, I'm actually rejected like almost every single day. But it makes you who you are. If you're not, you're not doing something right. I'm convinced. Cheers to rejection. Hell yeah. Because it makes you feel like badass when you're overcoming. Yeah. You know? It makes you stronger. So. And it has, hey, these stories. It gives really good stories. It's our, it's our, um, you know, it's our journey. Yeah. We all write our own book. And, right. And I know that your book is definitely going to end in an exclamation mark. Maybe <laughs> maybe a few exclamation marks. Thanks, Jess. Likewise. Thank you so much Likewise. for joining. And thank you guys all for tuning in. This is Taylor Ferber. Where can they find you? Guys, you can find me at Talk To Me Taylor across the board. Instagram and Twitter, um, my website. And it's really fun. And anything you want, want me to talk to subs about, nothing is on Very board, so. unfiltered. She yes. strips down the celebs. <laughs> yes. yes. Yes, exactly. And thank you guys so much. I hope you guys grabbed your rosé. And I will see all of you guys in the next video. Bye, girls.